If balayage is not one of your strong points, then keep watching because this look was created by doing mostly a full foil and a root shadow. If you'd like, you can find me on Instagram at Christy at the cottage. So my client is back after quarantine and today we are going to be chopping her hair off and brightening her up quite a bit. And so we are going to start by doing our foils around the face and the hairline around the back. And of course, this is my favorite. We always do the vertical foils around the face. That's just going to help give a nice natural brightness and it helps it grow out really softly without any stripes around the hairline. And no matter what kind of service I do, whether it's a balayage or a, fo a foil, I always do this foiling pattern around the hairline. A lot of clients want that really bold money piece and I personally, when I do a balayage, I'm really not comfortable um, painting around the hairline and doing a balayage that way. I just honestly don't prefer open air balayage. Every now and then I will, but generally this is my way that I like to do a money piece. I just like it to make sure that I have that extra brightness that my clients like. So if you are somebody that has a hard time doing balayage and brightening up around the face, don't be afraid to just throw in some foils and incorporate that in your service because 100% all of my blonding services, whether it's a balayage or a foil, this is always how I do my money piece and my clients are always happy with it. Make sure to ask your client how do they like their money piece and how do they like their foils or their blend around their hairline. Are they okay with it being really strong or do they want it extremely really soft and subtle? If they want it to look more like the sun just naturally sun kissed their highlights around their face, then make sure to do very fine like almost baby lights around the face of a weave. If you do too strong of a weave and too heavy or not big enough subsections in between, then it can become a little bit too heavy. But if you do really fine weaves, then you can do a little bit less of a subsection because it's not going to be too bold of a blonde right on the hairline and it will just grow out really softly. So make sure you ask your clients, are they okay with it being really bright around the hairline? Then you can take maybe a little bit stronger and thicker of a weave. But if they want it a little bit softer, then you might just want to stick to doing really fine baby lights right on the hairline. And honestly, right now, I feel like the trend is kind of having a very bold and bright money piece, almost like the whole front section of the hairline is like bleached out completely. So clients might want to do a little bit bolder of a money piece. And if you do that, you could even do like a weave, very fine slice and then a weave behind that. So that's also something to keep in mind if somebody's like, I just want to go for it. It's summertime. I really want to be super bright. I would recommend maybe doing like two fine weaves back to back with a little bit of a subsection and then maybe doing the third foil like a fine slice and then doing a weave directly behind that. I don't think I would ever do a slice directly on the hairline because then when they pull their hair back and you know maybe a month later as the hair grows back or however long it takes for them to come in then they're gonna see like a definite line growing out. So I would always incorporate a weave if somebody wants to try out a bolder money piece. Definitely incorporate a slice in there, but make sure you follow it up with a weave afterwards just to soften it up just a little bit. And for this client's money piece, we're doing 
very fine weaves and we're doing roughly like two to three foil packets um, back to back with teeny little subsections. Now we're working our way back around the hairline and I always like doing the hairline this way, that way if they pull their hair up, it also has a nice blend instead of seeing those heavy stripes again. And one thing that I need to try and work on is not being so meticulous, but this is just me wanting to do my best at all times. But the reality is, I mean, this is kind of time consuming to go back and do the hairline foil this way and it's honestly kind of difficult so um if you're going to be doing a root shadow then chances are you're going to be blurring out any of the lines that foils might create so you don't have to be that meticulous about doing a hairline and foiling it this way you could just go straight up the back and not have to worry about it but I'm just really paranoid and want to make sure that my foils always look amazing and that no matter when my client pulls their hair up or whatever, I want to make sure that they have a nice blend. So this is why I foiled this way, but there's times when I just need to realize that I don't have to be perfect at all times. So just a heads up, that's why I'm foiling it this way, but if you want to save some time and make it easier on yourself don't worry about going straight up the back because I, I'm i sure it would still have the same result because we are going to be doing a shadow root. Now, if you were just going to be doing a foil and not doing a shadow root, then 100% I would re recommend foiling this way because you want to make sure that they have a nice soft blend when they pull their hair up. But because we are going to be shadow rooting, it's going to have a nice blend regardless. So anyways... This is what I'm doing. The hair's gonna look nice when we pull it up, but it's gonna look nice regardless. Now that we're working our way in the center, we're just going to be doing straight up the back. And kind of the nice thing is doing the foils on the side that way, it kind of works your way in towards the center on the head of either side. And so that kind of takes away some of the work of having to do two rows up the back. So at least from the ears and down from the back section, we really only have to go up in one row so that kind of helps em eliminate having to do more foil work in the back but right now we're just going to be going up and doing a heavy foil we're going to be doing a weave and a slice that way we're going to get her nice and bright and we're still going to leave out some of her natural when we weave and some of a little bit of a subsection that way she still has a nice blend and she'll grow out nice and soft without having too heavy of a line of demarcation
Now that we're above the ears on this section, I rounded out over the top of the head and kind of made a little bit of a triangle. So now this makes it so that we have enough room where we will take diagonal sections back from either side of the head and then do a little foil right down the center. And we're just going to do this all the way to the top and we're still following with doing a slice and a weave with a little bit of a subsection in between. If you're not sure how heavy of a foil to do, then ask your client how bright they want to be. If they're wanting to have a balayage effect, ask them do they want to be mostly their natural with a little bit of brightness or they want to be mostly bright with a little bit of natural. That way you'll kind of have an idea on how much of a subsection you should leave in between or if you should do mostly slices or mostly a weave. My client here only really comes in maybe like two times a year. So I do want to make sure that she feels nice and bright, but I want to make sure that it's going to grow out really softly so that she doesn't feel like she has to come in immediately. So if somebody wants to be pretty bright, then I would say you could go through and do a really heavy slice and a weave and kind of alternate those between sections. And you could probably do a minimal subsection. But if somebody is wanting to still be pretty natural and have a lot of their natural tone still with just a little bit of blonde, then I would suggest doing larger subsections and honestly maybe foil diagonally versus horizontally that way it will blend a little bit better and you won't see any lines of the foils as easily and you could do maybe more of a weave versus doing slices now we're making our way up the top and we're going to be doing horizontal foils again. This is going to help the hair have a really nice blend. So we're going to continue doing a weave, subsection, and a really fine slice. And then we're going to be just continuing that all the way through the top of the head. Another thing that I always ask my clients when I'm doing a balayage is how do they like their balayage? Do they like it to be blended or do they like having a little bit more contrast in dimension in their hair? If somebody likes to have a blended balayage where it just really blends softly from the root down to brighter blonde ends, then I would highly recommend foiling the way that I'm foiling right now if balayage is something that you're not comfortable with but you want to be able to create the same look. I would definitely foil as I am currently in this video. This is gonna just really help have a really soft highlighted look that's gonna blend into their roots. But if they want to have um, a balayage where you can really see really bold pieces of blonde coming through the hair, or if they show you a picture where you can see a lot more contrast between the blonde and the dark color, then I would recommend foiling straight down the center of their part, like the mohawk section. And you could do like a weave and a slice and a little bit of a subsection. Or if they like a little bit more of bolder blonde pieces, then you can maybe do like two slices back to back. That's going to give them that really definite bold blonde pop of brightness that they're liking and that high definition and high contrast that they like. So those are just some ideas if balayage makes you uncomfortable or you're not really sure how to go about the service 
that's two different ways that you can go about it if somebody wants a blended balayage or if they want more of a high contrast balayage. And just to finish it up in the back area, we're going to be doing our weaves with a little bit of a subsection and a really fine slice. And we're just going to do a few packets of that just right to the top of the head. Now that we're over on this side of the head, we're just going to continue with the same foil pattern as the other side, a weave subsection and fine slice. Now that her whole head is foiled, we're gonna go through and paint the dropouts. This is gonna help again creating that balayage look even though we're doing a foil. If you were just to take the foils out and not blend the dropout section, then you'd still see a lot of the lines in the hair from the foils. So go through and take the sections that are falling out weave them and backcomb them and then go ahead and paint them pretty heavily to make sure that they get nice and bright. This is going to give a really nice balayage look to where it gets really bright towards the ends. If you're kind of uncomfortable going through and painting through the ends and you're worried about it blending or not, keep in mind that we have the foils throughout the top section. So no matter what you paint through the ends, remember that you're going to have the foils fall through the ends after everything is combed out. So don't worry about making sure that it's super blended or whatever. I mean, try to blend it and feather up as much as you can just to make sure that it's not like a big line of balayage that's not blended out 
just remember if you're uncomfortable that this is a good way to go about doing this because when you pull all those foils out and comb through the ends all those blonde pieces that we painted in the foils are going to blend through the balayage that you're painting right now and it's gonna blend naturally versus if you were just balayaging and not doing foils at the top of the roots then it might be kind of hard to blend out any lines or anything so don't worry about blending it will do a good job on its own just because we have those foils that will help blend through the ends as well And I don't really know if I'm explaining things very well, so give it a thumbs up if you know what the heck I'm talking about. So here's everything that we did. We did it pretty solid around the front for her balayage pieces. So she's gonna be really nice and bright and then it's gonna be kind of blended throughout the back, but still pretty heavy blonde throughout. This is what I toned her with. I did equal parts of the 10 PA and 10 V and just a little bit of the 9 PA. Now that we're doing her root shadow, I'm going to go through and mix, sorry that I didn't record this, but I'm using Paul Mitchell the Demi, 7 PA and 7 N. I'm using a little bit more of the 7 PA and just a dash of the 7 N. I will say that I don't feel like the Paul Mitchell Pearl Ash Tones are too ashy. I still feel like I need to use a heavy amount of the PA to the end just to make sure that it stays cool enough. Sometimes I feel like the Paul Mitchell just still leaves that a little bit warmer, so don't be afraid to go through and go heavy with the Pearl Ashes, especially if it's like the level seven or eight. Um, another thing for root shadows is depending on if you want to be able to see through the root shadow and see like a really small hint and small little pieces of the highlights i would definitely recommend using the demi because it just tones it down just a little bit but if you want to have a really strong root shadow and not be able to see through to the highlights then i would really recommend using schwarzkopf Agora Vibrance because that is a really strong toner. Whenever I use that, it really knocks out any of the brass that might be left behind a little bit better than the Paul Mitchell does. So if you're feeling like you're having a hard time going through and eliminating warmth when you're trying to blend the roots or get rid of any of the balayage where it kind of like warms up a little bit and the trans... Um, in the transition area, I'm sorry, I had to think for a second, then I really would recommend using the Schwarzkopf toners because I'm telling you, those kick the brass out with no problem at all. Another thing, my client really wanted to actually have a very dark root shadow, but I told her that I wouldn't recommend that just because her hair naturally is like a level seven or so. And if she wants to have like a root shadow that's like a level four or five, then as her hair grows out, she's potentially gonna have that band of dark that's kind of gonna be hard to eliminate. So I thought it would be best to blend her root shadow with her natural tone. That way she won't have any banding going on as her hair grows out. But if somebody does wanna have a little bit darker of a root shadow than what their natural is, then I would really recommend using Paul Mitchell the Demi because again, this is a little bit softer. It's not gonna be too heavy like some other colors might be. So Paul Mitchell the Demi would be a really good way to go if somebody wants to add more depth to their hair. So right now we're going to finish up doing her root shadow, just slap it on the roots and then kind of drag it down with the comb. That way it has a nice blend. And then once everything is blended, I kind of like to go through and just kind of swipe it here and there just to add some more dimension through the ends if I feel like there's a little bit of warmth or any brassiness that needs to be canceled out. Then I'll try to find those little pieces and paint the shadow root down through those areas also.
you can see as it's processing that it's darkening up really nicely but still being really blonde through the ends so this is why i think this is such a good option if somebody has a hard time with balayage or they're just not quite comfortable with it yet that go ahead and do your foil and make sure that you do a really good job with your blend of a shadow root and this is going to give you that balayage effect because now you're gonna have that brighter ends with a little bit more of a rooty look and it's gonna look just like a balayage and it's gonna be really really pretty and you can see right here how soft that root shadow is it still has really nice highlights showing through but it just kind of softly shadows it a little bit so don't be afraid when you're doing your root shadow to drag it through the ends because you can see that it really didn't darken it up that much it just helped blend it really nicely to the brighter blonde pieces Look how pretty that blonde is right in the front there. You can hardly even tell that this was a foil job. You would not at all be able to say that somebody had a full highlight right now. Everything just blurs really nicely together. So if this is something that you struggle with doing a balayage, I highly recommend you trying this out. It definitely makes the process a lot simpler and blends so much nicer. Don't be afraid to try something new. If you guys have already tried this out and you like the way it works for you, then definitely let me know in the comments because I always think it's good to hear how other people like to go about the process. If you have any other tips, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. But yes, look how pretty that looks. It just blends so nicely. It just flows really great from root to ends. Here's the end result up front with the natural sunlight, a little bit more of a truer tone versus the lighting back at the station. You can see that her hair blends really nicely with the shadow root through the blended ends. She's still nice and bright, but it just really softens it up a little bit. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.